This morning on BRN, mental health concerns are a huge part of primary care practice. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Dr. Avshalom Kaspi is with Duke University. Dr. Kaspi, so great to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is a great study. Um, and I want to get into the details about the study. But let's talk at a very high level. Based on the research that you and the team did, how important is mental health care uh, in, in, to our primary care physicians and patients uh, reaching out to their primary care providers? Uh, I think one of the things that's really um, quite astonishing about our findings is to discover how much of uh, our primary care physicians are being asked to uh, contend with mental health issues uh, and how many of people in, in our midst uh, around us uh, are actually seeking out primary care physicians to get help for mental health problems. And, and do you account for this, uh, you know, just anecdotally, and, and we'll get into that, you know, you can share what you can from the, from the research, but is that a direct result, for example, just people have a lot of anxiety, depression, and, and the stigma has started to go away about getting mental health treatment? Um, one of the findings uh, that uh, emerges from our analyses of all these primary uh, care records in the whole country. Uh, in fact, it's not just anxiety or depression. It's much more multifaceted. People are coming to their primary care physicians with many uh, more mental health issues than um, you would uh, think of uh, at, at first blush of, of just perhaps being depression uh, and anxiety. Uh, the fact that so many people are doing so um, uh, is, is in a sense uh, terrific. It's not terrific that they have these mental health issues, yeah. but it's terrific that they're actually um, uh, going to um, their primary care physicians to seek help. Yeah. And uh, our primary care physicians, I mean, they usually are, you know, most folks, at least here in the States, go to their primary care physician once a year to do annual physical. They get all the baseline testing, cholesterol. And is it is is it simply because that primary care physician is really that first point of contact and guardian to all the other channels of healthcare. That's right. So look, primary care physicians are, are the first point of contact for navigating the, the, the mental um, healthcare system, right? But what surveys have repeatedly sort of shown to us is that primary care physicians also feel that they're really ill-equipped to deliver um, uh, uh, the needed uh, care. So what our goal was basically to try to provide concrete evidence, right? To ask, you know, how big is the problem? How many mental health issues, how many men encounters with mental health issues do primary uh, care physicians have? Um, and it turns out that it's much bigger than we ever imagined, right? Uh, now, the trouble is, or the problem is, how do you go about estimating something like this? Right. Um, and what we did was we were able to go um, 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 uh, to Norway uh, and work with our Nor Norwegian colleagues. Uh, and what we did was we analyzed Norway's uh, nationwide administrative uh, primary care records. And we extracted all of the doctor patient encounters that occurred uh, during the 14 year period um, between 2000. Um, uh, and six in 2019. Uh, so you say, well, why did we go to Norway? Because it turns out that Norway is the only place in the world where we have access to an entire nation's primary care record system, right? Administrative records. Uh, so it's really uh, an incredibly uh, 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 unique resource uh, in which we can seek to estimate just how big the load is, both on the part of doctors as well uh, as on the part of patients. And you, you made the statement, I'm paraphrasing here, that doctors, primary care physicians may feel overwhelmed because they may not be prepared to handle the volume, but also may not know where to direct their patients. How do, you, how do we change that? So we, we, you've established through this study that it's millions, not 
thousands, not hundreds. It's millions of people that are going to their PCP for this guidance. So how do we help the primary care physicians better be better suited to, to act on behalf of their patients? Well, let, let, let's go back and actually first get a sense of, of the scope of the problem here, right? So what we did was during this 14 year period from 2006 to 2019, and by the way, I should point out, remember, this is to the end of 2019. So we deliberately did not include what was going on during during the pandemic, right? Because we didn't want things to be skewed by what was going on then. So I think what I'm about to tell you is probably, um, you, you know, uh, as an underestimate of what has happened over the last, say, four years. But what we did was we were able to analyze 350 million primary care medical encounters. And what we found is that one out of every nine of these doctor-patient encounters in primary care involved a mental health condition. So you say, I don't know, is that, you know, is that 12% of all these 12, you know, 350 million encounters a lot? The way to think about it is to say, well, what else are primary care physicians treating? So it turns out, um, and, and this should actually be a quiz for the audience, right, for the uh, people listening out there. Uh, uh, what is the most common condition? It turns out that the most common condition are, are uh, and in fact, the only conditions that exceed, right, uh, mental health conditions are musculoskeletal uh, uh, conditions, right? Um, uh, they account for, um, accounted for a greater share of primary care physicians' um, uh, attention to did mental health uh, uh, conditions. So the volume of mental health um, uh, encounters in primary care um, equaled encounters the primary care physicians have for infections, for cardiovascular conditions, for respiratory uh, conditions. They exceeded encounters uh, for pain, for injuries, for metabolic, uh, digestive, skin, uh, urological, reproductive, and sensory conditions, right? So if you think of the body, right, if you think of what's happening in a primary care setting, right? Well, Primary care physicians are treating the whole body. And if you think of the body, you think, where in the body are they really, sort of what system are they focusing on? Um, it seems that, in fact, a lot of what primary care physicians are encountering are mental um, health conditions. Um, and that's a lot. And, and as is. I noted earlier, a lot of surveys with, 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 with primary care physicians, you know, primary care physicians are saying, look, our, our, our practices are overwhelmed with these. Um, if you think of how much time primary care physicians are focused on mental health conditions, I've sort of calculated um, um, that if if a primary care physician has what twenty minute appointments, right? Basically, it turns out that about one day a week they're actually treating mental health conditions. They're almost you know one day a week they're like clinical psychologists. So I think one of the things that this implies. And, and, and really that the findings underscore is just how important integrative mental, it, 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 just how important it is to really integrate mental health services um, uh, into uh, uh, primary care settings. Um, how can we do this? Well, you know, one idea is to um, actually facilitate linkage to specialty um, uh, uh, mental health care, something that's uh, called um, um, uh, warm um, handoffs is a phrase um, um, that's uh, often um, um, talked about. So that's, you know, we're, that's really one way in which, you know, the primary care physician can walk, right, the patient down the hall to see um, a, a mental health uh, specialist and sort of deliver this kind of um, uh, warm uh, handoff. Uh, that's something that has been talked um, a lot about, uh, this kind of a collaborative care model that we can establish in primary care settings. Uh, and, and, and that's something that's really, I think, very um, uh, important uh, to try to uh, emphasize. Uh, you know, look, in addition, we need to really be thinking, um, uh, you know, one, one thing that people say is, well, we need to give primary care physicians more training in mental health, okay? I, we can't ask them to do everything, can we? Right. No. Um, so that's that's why this kind of collaborative care model is so appealing. Uh, we need to really create, I think, a primary care workforce that can deliver mental health services. Right. It shouldn't all just fall on the primary care physicians. Uh, we need more mental health training for physician assistants, for instance. Right. Um, uh, we need increased training of clinical psychologists in primary care. And, and all of this is important because 
you know, most mental health problems call for evidence-based non-pharmacological treatment, right? Um, and that can best be uh, delivered by that kind of workforce. Yeah. Well, certainly, you know, you looked at pre-pandemic, doctor, and we've got to wrap up the interview, but I, I was just going to say, I can only imagine what the numbers look like post-pandemic because everything I read talks about anxiety and depression, and, and so many of us are facing those things. Dr. Caspi, we're going to have to leave it there. So great to see a great study, and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thanks very much. Pleasure to be with you. And don't forget to subscribe to our daily newsletter, The Morning Bulls, for all the news in one place. Details are at our website. And we're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving. And don't forget, roll with the changes.